Going Nowhere, Episode 15, The Tunnels. All right, I'm here. Let's get this show going. Do I have to pay admission, and do you think I could get some popcorn with this clown show? Meg's running a couple minutes late. Uh, Look, I know the situation in the cornfields was uh, difficult, but since you decided to show up, I'm going to assume you're in the same position I'm in. Things aren't adding up, and you'd like to know why. Yeah, I'm sure that's the only reason you're still following her crazy little red string crusade wherever it takes you. If anything happens that I'm not comfortable with, I'm walking away. I'm allowed to walk away. Got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, here's the target, folks. The locked archives under town hall. It shows up on the blueprint of the building far below the basement. And their official statement says that this archive is filled with historic documents, original copies, and otherwise fragile pieces that may have been compromised in a way that requires them to be cared for in a climate-controlled room, something the Museum of Nowhere currently cannot provide. However, if I'm right, They may hold something much more incriminating. Yeah, okay. If we're visiting a climate-controlled room to look over documents, then why did you tell me to dress like I was going hiking? We said hiking. It's more like urban exploration. We needed you to be ready for the tunnels. What did the tunnels have to do with- After the Great Fire, a significant amount of the original foundations of nowhere were destroyed. Ellie narrowed down three locations that were built on top of these old foundations. Brentwood Area Community College, St. Gemma's Baptist Church, and the Nowhere Town Hall. Meaning that if there is access to the old tunnels, then it would only be viable through one or more of these three buildings. And it is. I, uh, sort of didn't tell you, but the reason I even go to Brentwood is so I could get a student ID card take a gap year, and go digging around campus without too much hassle. Which is when I looped Ellie in. We've been digging, exploring, and mapping for, what, over a year? Easily. With both of us working on the project, it made mapping go ten times faster. I mainly stopped to focus on consolidating the maps from each expedition into one accessible blueprint, if you'd call it that. We wouldn't know for sure if there was even another point of contact from the tunnels. Except for the fact that there might just be after all. See, the tunnels, for reasons unknown to us right now, are needlessly complicated. If you look at this path right here, and this path right here, they're rounding towards the other two possible points of entry. I've gotten close, but I haven't quite reached either of them yet. We don't even know for sure if the parts of the foundation that might have connected to the tunnels are even still intact. Originally, Meg and I were just going to split the church and the college between us in hopes that if we both have copies of the map, at least one of us would be able to make it to the town hall. However, given that everything with the plan is very touch and go, we needed a backup, which is where you come in. I'm supposed to go down to town hall? And what's the outcome of that? Well, Ellie and I will either end up at Town Hall or interrupting a Girl Scout meeting. But hey, I never really wanted to get my cookie-eating badge or whatever it is. If you can get in from Town Hall, then hopefully we can walk away with something out of those archives. So, your plan is robbery? The great, totally not a Meg Bliss or Ellie Novak plan is robbery? I mean, it's a little more nuanced than that. All right, I'm out. Okay, I'll put it this way. You should help us, because if we fail without you helping us, the first person we're going to point at is you. And I don't think there would be a single person who wouldn't believe us. Are you blackmailing me? Well, we're certainly not not 
blackmailing you. I cannot believe that- Listen, we need your help because we need one person at each of the entrances. If you don't want to do it, fine. We can ask Olivia Williams or someone. What? What? You would invite Olivia Williams? You would invite Olivia Williams without letting me get a bucket of water to throw at her in the hopes that she melts? Okay, maybe not Olivia. You're just trying to get me to say yes, aren't you? Look, Scotty, if we can get access to these archives, we can get access to census records, to birth certificates, death certificates. Even if they are covering up disappearances, we would know. And if we don't find anything, I'll drop it. All of it. And I'll stop bothering you. Ugh, fine. Fine, whatever. You guys are splitting my medical bills, got it? I'm currently at the mouth of the tunnel, right where we found it. Ready to go. No one saw you? (laughs) It's the library. I'm here often enough between school and historical society work that no one even batted an eye when I took the lift to the basement. How about you? I'm also in position. How'd you manage that? Surprisingly, when the church isn't really in use, it's kind of empty. The doors are open, you can just walk in. No one's really here. Hmm, convenient. Right, okay. Ellie and I are starting towards you, following the map, but we won't be able to talk you through the whole ordeal. I'm about to hit a section that's too deep for cell service, but you know what you're gonna do, right? Ugh, please. You think I can't pull- pull this off? (sighs) Never mind. Hey, Ignis, Iggy, how you doing, man? Uh, uh, hey, man, I'm uh, I'm doing good. How how are you? Keen as a peach, my friend. Listen, I really, really need you to do me a favor. I mean, I Iggy, Iggy, my friend. We're friends, right? I I guess you come here often enough that we're friends. Fantastic. Friends, by proxy of my enemy and all that jazz, is great. That's... people don't say that. (laughs) Point is, I really need to get into the archive. You know, downstairs. Scotty, we're we're really not allowed to let anyone down here for, like, the sake of historic artifacts. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I know, but have you considered... I just... I really need to get my hands on some death certificates for an article I'm working on. For my journalism course. Whoa, dude, there's a big difference between tipping you off an obituary as they come in and breaking the rules. Laws? Rules. To let you go down and touch probably very fragile pieces of paper. Wait, it... My, my supervisor told me he... Are you... Are you here with Megan Ellis? Them? (laughs) No. In fact, absolutely not. Never again. I am done with those two. I wash my hands clean of their blood. Wait. No, not blood. I didn't kill them. I just... I killed our friendship. Maybe killing them wasn't the right word, but I am done. And I am writing a movie. That's right. A movie about how awful they are and stealing Meg's whole shtick about the town's history and whatever. (laughs) Listen, if you let me look at those death certificates, I'll give you a permanent position as my consultant for the movie, huh? We'll submit it to some indie film festival and win absolutely nothing because someone who was funded with much more money got recognized instead. Thank you so much, Iggy. (sighs) That was exhausting. (sighs) 
It looks like I'm going straight from here on. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what my parents would like to hear right now. Oh, God, these headlamps really don't give off much light, do they? I am going the right way, aren't I? He had to bring up the fact that I'm still helping Meg. Well, I can't like history too. I, I love history. I'm a junior member of the Nowhere Historical Society. Why wouldn't I like history? Granted, I don't quite like it the way Meg does. When she looks at history, you can tell that it's more than just dates and names on a page. The puzzle pieces, the Polaroids of people's lives that she's desperately trying to fit within each other. I think she's hoping that when she stands back, it will all make one big picture that finally makes sense. But it doesn't make a lot of sense right now. At this point in my life, I've accepted that not a lot of things do. I just hope that she can accept that too. I'm sure if Scotty were here, he'd chastise me, tell me I'm apologising for her again. Maybe I am. I've gotten told I'm too trusting before. And forgiving people's gotten me into some pretty bad friendships. Hang on, this crossroads isn't on the map. Shit, am I going the right way? Okay, deep breaths. You know how to make good maps. You did put a directional orientation and even if your phone doesn't get service down here, I'm sure the compass still works. Okay, keep going right. See Ellie, that wasn't so hard. And even, even if I was being too kind to Meg every time she does something harmful or stupid, I think I'd rather be too kind and sometimes get burned because of it than accidentally be cruel. Should have made a betting pool before we left. Pitted Ellie's ancient lost forest civilization repurposed by a generation of abolitionists idea against Scotty's naturally occurring structures with supernatural powers, some of which used by the Underground Railroad, some of which utilized by satanic groups theory. Don't really believe either of them, but maybe if we can find what we need in here, we can figure that out. Start remembering the names in history that Nowhere has forgotten. Both of them think I'm a bad person, don't they? You know, sometimes I don't blame them. It feels crushing. Though that might just be the dirt walls of this stupid tunnel. What is it called when you feel like nothing could ever take you down, but also like life itself is out to get you? I mean, is that just being 19? All of that feels too overdramatic, actually. That's how I'd describe it if I didn't know exactly what it was. There is a thread, knotted in my stomach, tied to something I cannot see. But I can feel it tugging on me, pulling me ever closer towards the other end of the string. Even if I dug my heels into this muddy ground, even if I dared to try and pull back, no force can overcome the pull of the string. <gasps> Holy shit, we actually made it! I know! And the entrance is real! <laughs> I know! Oh my god, I'm so happy! I don't even know if I need anything from the archive!
We're still going into the archive, though. Yes, of course we're still going into the archive. Okay. Well, is it everything you ever dreamed of? Tons of metal shelves filled with records, books, unlabeled drawers, and boxes marked only with faded ink. Yeah, kind of. I have to hand it to you. Oh! I didn't think it would Jesus. be this... You know, funny enough, not the first time I've gotten that comparison. But no, not him. Let's hurry up. We don't have much time to waste. June 13th, 1976. April 8th, 2003. November 16th, 1945. October 26th, 1853. February 29th, 1683. Uh, they have copies of the Nowhere Tribunal, pulled seemingly at random, dating back to nearly the invention of the newspaper. There are decades worth of research and documentation this archive would yield that the museum hasn't been touched, as far as I know. Oh. What section is this? Wow, Grayson family is so important that it even got its own section in this cursed place. Folder is just filled with certificates. Births, deaths, marriages. Looks like after his presumed death, Matthew Grayson's only daughter got her last name legally changed to. Yeah, that's too smudged. I can't make it out. Looks like an H, maybe? Or a B? Regardless, it's coming with me. Ah, here you are, my old friends. Obituaries. Let's see. Oliver Davis. Singapore. Fairbanks. Madeline Woodland. Nicholas Doran. Charlie Lyle. Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you alright? Hey, hey. It's okay. Let's just... What? Why do you both look like that? My ears are buzzing like crazy. Why is my neck wet? Okay, uh, don't freak out. Uh, your right ear is kind of bleeding. Bleeding? Only kind of bleeding. It's mostly clear. I think you just ruptured your eardrums somehow. Let's hope that shout wasn't as loud as it sounded. Oh, shit. Uh, we... You know, you kids get into so much more that you shouldn't. I nearly see you more than I see my own wife. Even if you arrest us, we're going to tell people what's down here. That there's tons of information you're keeping from the public, documents which are perfectly fine to interact with, by the way. Who said I was gonna arrest you? Or was that just the conclusion you came to from that narrative in your head that just says you're the hero of your own little story? The, I- We're just going to talk for now. Threats don't work, so any involvement by law enforcement officers would just be for the safety of me and all my employees. Obviously, y'all don't fear God nor anything man has to throw at you. Whether that's stupidity or just ignorance, <laughs> I can't really decide. I think I want to tell you about the town hall. How about that? How things work around here, the fact that it works efficiently in the first place. The fact that it keeps working day in and day out. Sound like a good topic? Why? Why do you have to deliberately antagonize people when you could get more out of them by just not being rude? It's like you don't even want yourself to succeed, so you just keep chasing this. Let's just hide in there, okay? No, I go through this door. What's so special about that room? Just 
Trust me. Huh. What the hell? What the hell? I... I don't know. I mean, I knew that something would happen, but not... that. <laughs> oh god, and now we're trapped. Like monkeys in a barrel. Fish in a barrel. I... I, I think... I think we should still take advantage of this time. Uh, let me grab... I got the door. I'll help you. Meg, just grab whatever's closest. Then we need to figure out what our plan is to get out of here. Okay, okay. First thing, this leather journal is pretty old. You don't need to appraise the old book. Just grab it and let's go. Pages are kind of stuck together. Don't touch anything. See if I can open the front cover. For God's sake, just throw it in the bag, Meg! I'm not going to be able to hold the door. Holy shit. The Diary of Arthur Grayson. I thought... Scotty! Oh, but... Meg, you need to get over here. I know we said we'd help you out this time, but... It's gone too far, Meg. Got anything to say about it, Mayor? Drop that book. I know how to handle old books. Unless it's infested with mold or something, I don't know why you- Just hand me the book. Now let you and your friends walk out. Not a word of this to police or your parents. Meg? No. Megarabilis. That book is dangerous. Now I don't think you understand- What? You think I don't understand historic government corruption? Historic authoritarian corruption? Because I'm just some stupid- Stupid little girl, is that Hand it? Hand me the book. At least tell me what's so bad about it. Listen to me. That book has certain words which hold a lot of power in them. Certain words spoken by the right people do. And you may not like how I handle things, but I keep this town safe. I keep the people I am in charge of safe. So let me do my job and hand me the damn book, Meg. Because there are worse things out here than Mayor? You have no idea what you have in your hands, Matthew. What? Matthew? You could never do anything right, could you? Give me the book. No! Damn it! Get off! Book, I said get! You're not... <coughs> where, where did the mayor... You shouldn't have opened that damn book. Going Nowhere is a podcast by the Nowhere radio station, but specifically featured... Kylie Taylor as Mara Jane. Caitlin Pansia as the voice of Mabel. Eric Smith as Oliver Davis. Rose K. Morgan as Charlie Lyle, Alexis Grandis as The Woman or Madeline Ridlin, Andrew Weston as The Man or Nicholas Doran, Aaron Ray as Scotty Walker, Elizabeth Plant as Ellie Novak, David Cook as Mayor Grayson, Kyle Chua as Mayor Grayson, Eli Pluto Boy Summers as Ignace and Matthew Wisdom as Arthur Grayson. Additionally, Going Nowhere was written, directed, and edited by A.M. Anderson as Meg Bliss. A gigantic thank you to everyone who has rated and reviewed this podcast on iTunes, Podchaser, and Podbean. And, of course, thank you to those who have tuned in for part one of this story. It's been an amazing experience to share it with y'all, and I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. I will be hosting a Q&A if it is desired, so submit questions using the link in the episode description. Nominations for the Audioverse Awards have just opened up, so if you liked any aspect of Going Nowhere, please consider nominating us. It would mean a lot. 
I do have some things planned for the break, such as bloopers, and hopefully remastering some of the episodes, as I am still learning and hoping to use this time to better get acquainted with audacity and sound editing in general. Going Nowhere will return next spring slash summer, 2021, for part two. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr, at The Nowhere Radio, for more updates, fun content, and opportunities to interact with the community. Visit the card in the episode description for all useful links. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.